Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at the adventures of Dex Dixon, which is brought to you by Dexiverse Development. It's for one to four players, ages 14 up, and games generally run about 25 minutes per player. The Dexiverse is set in a multi-spoked universe. Each spoke of the universe is a dimension populated by unique citizens. Creatures of legend and lore, humans, vampires, where be some more. A limitless number of spokes exist, many of them undiscovered and uncharted. At the convergence of these dimensional spokes lies the hub world, Nightside. At the center of Nightside is the Talisman Aperture, an ancient obelisk that controls the gateways and doors that lead to and from Nightside and all other dimensions. The Aperture Gate between our fair city and Nightside is in danger of collapse. Only Dex Dixon and his team of paranormal investigators stand between the vampire Lord Horus and a future of never-ending darkness and terror. The Adventures of Dex Dixon is a competitive team-based game. Players will choose to stand with either the heroes of our fair city or the monstrous villains of Nightside, a hub world connecting all known dimensions. Each team will compete to achieve the win conditions in one of 10 included scenarios. These scenarios range from player elimination, objective collection and distribution, artifact acquisition and activation, to defending the city from complete destruction at the claws, teeth, and horns of rampaging trolls. Teams will collect and employ powerful equipment, artifacts, and magical powers to achieve their goals, using their character's own unique abilities to further affect the outcome and bring their side to victory. But both sides need to be vigilant and defend the Aperture Gate from each other. If Horus can force it open, he can march his army straight into the heart of our fair city. But if Dex can somehow seal the gateway, his world will be safe from the darkness at least until the next game. So, first and foremost, this is a team-based game. You have the light side and dark side, basically, but there are scenarios, several to choose from, and they vary greatly. So that will dictate a lot of setup, as well as what you're doing in the game. We'll cover the basics of what you do in the game, but what you're actually trying to achieve is going to be varied greatly. You might be a pick up and deliver. You might be an escort mission. You might be putting out fires, battling trolls, or just doing player elimination. It all depends on the type of scenario. Now, there is a universal way to win the game by closing the portal. So when you have actions and you're rolling your dice, if you roll a six, you can place one of your side tokens on the portal, trying to close it or open it if you happen to be a villain. Now, depending on the length of game you wanna play, will determine how many of these types of tokens you'll put into play in order to win. So it is a secondary win condition. Like I said, in the theme of this game, it definitely plays into it. And it just gives the players another way to win the game. And you have two main boards. You have Our Fair City and Nightside. And now a lot of the scenarios call for both of these to be connected where the portal's in the middle, but some scenarios only call for one or the other. It just depends on how you're playing and what scenario you're playing. And then as far as your characters go, when you place them out also depends on the scenario and where they're placed and how long you want the game to be in some instances and so forth. So characters, every player has a boss. You have bosses, heroes for our fair city and you have villains for night side. So those are gonna just depend on how you wanna divide up your teams and who you want to play, but you have several to choose from. You have your big boss card, which shows your character's profile, as well as what your starting health is and your PP tokens. These are basically power tokens that you're gonna get right up front and you'll need to get more through the course of the game because you will be spending them on power cards, basically spells. So along with your character sheet, you'll see that you have those two main stats at the top. Then you have your basically your different types and advantages you have for in battle, like what a plus you might have when you attack, what pluses you might have when you do damage, and what your movement is. Along with that, each character has their own special ability below. Each player will also receive a set of dice. Now, I love dice checkers, and this definitely has that in spades. But what's nice about this game is that when you throw these dice, you get to choose how you spin them, and you have a lot of ways to augment these rolls as well. And at the bottom of your boss card, you'll see that you can bank dice because potentially you may want to spin dice out of turn to use a power card if you're attacked by your opponents. At the start of the game, you're gonna get two power cards and two equipment cards. Now, you don't put these into play right away. You'll have to activate them and pay the cost to do so. But through the course of the game, there's ways to get more of these cards. There's also two other types. You've got events and artifacts. Now, all these cards share some similarities in the top left corner tells you what type of card it is, but they are also color coded. And on the right, 
you'll see the cost, if there is a cost, in PowerPoint tokens in order to activate it and put it into play. And then, once it's in play, you may have to spend a dice. They'll show a dice at the bottom of the, of the card if it calls for it. And obviously, each card has a description about how it works and what it does. And then there is a scope. So in the bottom left corner, scope will tell you how it affects the board. So either it's globally everywhere, just one side of the board or the other, or it's something that attaches to you, your boss character, like a machine gun. And depending on the card, you may have a range icon showing you how many spaces it affects. Then on the right side of the card is duration. So you have several different types here. You've got sticky, you've got slippery, and you've got gift. Sticky means it stays in play. So it might be a trench coat that you're using or you may have slippery. So when you use the slippery, it's a little banana peel, and when you use the card, then you discard it. And then gift is interesting because what's cool here is that, well, maybe not cool, but you use the power of this card, spend the cost and so forth, but then you have to gift it to one of your opponents. So these cards give you so many options and different things you can do with your dice. Now, the last type of card I wanna talk about are mugs. These are basically henchmen that you can gather and use through the course of the game. And you can even swap them out because you only have one henchman or one mug at a time, but they're gonna have similar stats and they have different abilities as well. And it just gives you a way to spread out across the board and do more things. And when you spend your movement dice, you can split it up between the two characters, the boss and the mug. But the thing here is that there's three different types. You've got neutral characters that could go on either the heroes or the villains, or you've got specific villain and you've got specific hero types of mugs. So, and they're all again, color coded, you know what they're doing and you have symbols in the top left that show exactly which side they are and how you can match and pair them up. So those are the basics of all the different types of cards. So let's now take a look at the different types of actions and what you're doing on your turn. So the first thing you're doing on your turn is taking your five dice and rolling them. And then you get to sign dice however you see fit. Now, remember you might want to bank some dice for later use in the round in case you're attacked or something like that. But in general, you're gonna be spinning this dice on movement, on special abilities for your boss or your mug, or on any of the types of cards you have in play. Again, you might have event cards, or you might have artifact cards, or equipment and power cards that you have in play. And of course, to get these cards into play will cost you PowerPoint tokens. Now, why and how you use all these different types of actions and things you can do, is very dependent on the scenario. So maybe you need to go somewhere and pick something up to deliver it to a certain area. So it's all gonna be dependent on what you're doing. And of course, there are ways to attack your opponents. Also, always remember to take into account all your modifiers for your specific boss level character or even cards that you might even play. So when you do an attack, you're gonna roll one red dice and you're gonna add in any of your cards, all your modifiers, you're trying to earn the right to do damage. So you'll battle back and forth and of course your opponent could defend as well. And if you do win and attackers win ties, then you're going to roll for damage. You roll a yellow dice and then you're gonna add in any of your modifiers for that damage, depending on what type of weapon you're using and of course your base modifiers as well. And then you apply those tokens to your opponent. It's really that simple, straightforward. It is that dice checker at heart and you do have ways to modify how these dice work, especially with the different cards you have in play and so forth. So it really does give you bonuses and things to take into account. Now again, why and how you're doing these things depends on the scenario. And there are several icons to take note of on the main board. You've got health. Maybe you took damage, so you need to go to health spot, roll a six-sided dice, and gain some of that health back. Or you need to get more cards, visiting either any of the color spaces that give you power cards, equipment, events, or artifacts. And finally, you can also recruit a mug. If you don't have one, then you're gonna get one, or you can replace one that you already have in play. And then finally, there are some fast travel areas like sewers, and there's portals, but some of the portals, depending on scenario and so forth, you land on a portal, and once per game, you can get a token to put on the main portal in the middle of the board. Again, that's your second win condition and the universal win condition for all of the different scenarios. So there's lots of different things going on and it might even dictate what happens in the scenario based on where you go. There might be new areas to visit for putting out fires, let's say. So there's lots of different things, again, based on the scenario. So those are the basics of play. And one of the neat things about getting the different types of cards is some do have charges. So it won't require a dice to be in play, but you'll put a charge on a card. You might have three charges, and once it's used, it's gone. And you also have the option of fencing your cards or pawning your cards to get more power tokens because you are gonna be running low as you're spinning them. You'll need to get more through the course of the game. 
Last thing I want to mention are the trolls. So you have to deal with them through the course of the game in various modes and so forth, but there is a way to play as the trolls. They have their own deck of cards, they have their own boss card and so forth, but it is an interesting aspect. I liked playing as the troll, that was really fun. But they do give you a different type of play when you do so. So in the end though, you hope you're the team that achieved all the scenario objectives for the win. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower Paid Preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, I really like the theme. You know, it has that noir feel to it as you move through and deal with these supernatural creatures or even use some of them on your team, or maybe you're taking the villain side. Some really interesting aspects there, and I love dice chuckers, and the fact that I can spend and use the dice however I want is a big plus for me. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.